Hi, it's Hardik Mittal and I'm with my friend Ankit Chamoli and we are shooting a video for Khan Academy Talent Search. The topic of my video is Laws of Motion. Basically, Laws of Motion was given by, actually were given by Newton. And Newton is, no need to say, he is Isaac Newton. And he gave three laws of motion. The first one was Law of Inertia. It's a very simple law and it states that if a body is in state of rest or motion, that is it is moving with a uniform velocity, then it will tend to remain in that state unless and until an unbalanced external force is applied. The main thing to focus is unbalanced. For example, if I take an example, there's a block over here on a surface and it is at the state of rest. Unless and until I apply an external force on it, it won't move. But Take the case if I apply an F, F force in this direction and equal and opposite force in opposite direction. Then also it won't move. That is to move the block we need an unbalanced external force. That this law of inertia is of three types. Basically it has three sub laws which are inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. Inertia of rest and motion as their name suggests is due to their rest and motion. Inertia of direction is the tendency of an object to move in a particular direction unless and until an unbalanced force is applied. Now moving on to second law. Second law basically people are of the notion that second law is F is equal to mass times acceleration which is true but this is not the law. The law states that net force is equal to change of rate of change of momentum and this momentum is the linear momentum which is mass times velocity now putting mass times velocity in the equation we get dmv by dt and we have product rule of differentiation as Applying this rule over here, we get m dv by dt plus v dm by dt. Basically, we in most of the cases, we take mass as constant. That is, change in mass is zero. So, this term goes zero. And we all know that differentiation of velocity with respect to time gives us acceleration. So, it equals mass times acceleration but there are some cases also in which the mass is not constant and one such case is the rocket propulsion in rocket propulsion as the rocket is going up the fuel inside the rocket that is the hydrogen and oxygen fuel inside the rocket is constantly being used up so the mass of the rocket also decrease that is there is a change in mass. So, while solving the rocket propulsion problems, we have to consider dm by v dm by dt also. Now, coming on to the third law. Third law is actually the most famous law of physics and it is every, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. But, there are some consequences, that there are some uh, things to ponder about it. They are that the action and reaction acts on two different bodies that is if I apply a force on this table then the table will apply the force on me not on itself that is two bodies are involved in the whole whole system that is me and this table and the both the action and reaction forces are equal and opposite and act on different bodies this was the theoretical law and the applications of third law are more important which are drawing FBDs. Now FBD stands for free body diagram.
There are some steps to draw a free body diagram, which is separate the bodies. Step two goes draw weight. Weight is mg, mass times the gravitational acceleration, which is always towards the center of earth. Third step, search for all contacts. And contact forces. Contact forces, for example, friction, etc. And step four. Here's where the second law of motion hops in. It is use second law to get final answer. Now, we'll take an example of how to draw a free body diagram. Say, I have a system of two blocks, one over other. I have to draw its FBD. Step one is separate the bodies. And I shall make it over here again. It is M2 and M1. Separate the bodies. The second step was draw their weight. Now, according to Newton's third law, to this weight, that is action, there will be a reaction. And this reaction is normally called normal reaction. This will be equal and opposite. Now, we take the system at acceleration is equal to zero. That is, they are at rest or, or moving with a constant velocity. It is very important. Now, according to Newton's second law, F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Since acceleration is zero, F net is zero. Now, if I take this system, In this system, F net is equal to M2G minus N2, which is 0 is equal to M2G minus N2 or N2 is equal to M2G. This further proves our Newton's third law that is, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, for getting N1, I have to take in consideration both of these blocks. Here, while calculating the net force, we have to take the total mass, that is M1 plus M2 as a whole, G plus actually minus N1. F net is 0, so N1 is equal to M1 plus M2 G. Now another problem, it is based on tension in the string. Some basic facts about tension, it is basically the force on the string. It is always pulling force. That is. See, I have, these draw I have drawn these arrows towards each other, like this, and not away from each other, because they are pulling the two strands of string towards each other. If they would be against each other, that is, if they push, the string will obviously break, which we don't want. So, the tension is always the pulling force, and it is always constant throughout the string.
that is tension in this region that is if I take tension in th at this point or this point the tension will be same but here the string is not same because there is a mass suspended with it so T1 and T2 will be different but at this and this point the T2 will all be same because tension throughout the string is same now we will calculate the tension in each of these three strings we have taken the system at rest or moving with constant velocity so f net is mass times acceleration since acceleration is zero f net will be zero we'll draw the weight downwards We can draw this tension upwards like this. Now, if we take this system, it is F net is M three G minus T three f net is 0 from here so m3 g minus t3 is 0 t3 is equal to m3 g now to calculate t2 see this string is holding both of these blocks so while calculating t2 we have to take both of these blocks in consideration that is f net is equal to M M2 plus M3 both as a whole minus T2 0 is equal to M2 this so we get T2 as M2 plus M3 G now similarly for this case Thus, this T1, the, this, this string, this part of string is holding all of these three blocks. So, for calculating T1, we will see F net is equal to M1 plus M2 plus M3 G minus T1. Since F net is 0, is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 g so here we get the solution for our answer t1 is m1 plus m2 plus m3 g t2 is m2 plus m3 g and t3 is m3 g hope i was of service to you thank you